Australia. And I uh, hope you're listening on your way into work today, as you often uh, text me and let me know <laughs> he's listening down there. Obviously, the next day, it's Tuesday down there. Uh, so that was Incident on 57th, live in Boston, 1974, with a beautiful violin uh, background by uh, a lady named Suki Lahav. She was uh, married to uh, Bruce's sound engineer at the time and would often go out and tour with them. She played on a few uh, cuts on the, um, uh, some of the studio versions, like Jungle Land and a few other things. But uh, for the most part, she would go out and tour with them. And then uh, word has it that they uh, started falling for each other, and she had to leave. Whether that's true or not, I guess, I guess we'll never know. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to give a shout-out to my buddy Wayne. Wayne, how are you today? I know you were, uh, we've been on here since uh, 4 o'clock. We did the, the mix. But I want to thank you for taking over for a couple weeks for me. Well, you know, I enjoyed it. I found out so much about Bruce. I checked out a lot of his songs, and I have even more of an appreciation for him. You played some good stuff. Thanks. Yeah, he's a remarkable performer. Yes, he is. Or I wouldn't be doing this today. <laughs> so, uh, but, yeah, that was, uh, that was a rare, kind of a rare cut from... Uh, Boston, 1974, I was looking up some of the details. It's, uh, it's funny listening to some of these when he was just going out and, uh, you know, that uh, this was prior to uh, Born to Run. So here, you know, there's only, what, probably two or three hundred people in that place. And uh, it's amazing. He, he still poured everything into those performances. So it's an anniversary week. Actually, you know, I was doing some investigation. A, he's got four albums that came out in October. It's a good time. Why is, why is October a good time, Wayne? Why do Beatles put out stuff in October? Well, it's getting closer to the Christmas. That's it. Time. That's whatever. You know, you get flooded with new releases. I, I think it was only, like I said, four out of I don't know how many uh, albums he's got. But, I mean, uh, Beatles were fabulous for putting out stuff in, like, uh, like October, early November, things like that, of course, so capital cash in, <laughs> capitalize, yeah, no pun intended, but, uh, so the river came out, uh, this week in 1980, and, uh, very vivid memories of running to the, uh, the, uh, distributor there and picking up my copy, now, this was big for me because I was, this was the first album that came out since I was, uh, introduced, so, uh, the darkness had already been out, met the wife at that by that point, and then she started turning me on to him, and, um, so what I picked as the, uh, the first one to play here is, this was actually the first introduction of that song from the No Nukes, do you remember No Nukes? Nope. Yeah, they had the 19, uh, so we had all the people that got together for the, uh, Artists Against Nuclear Power, uh, there was a... They did a big series of shows back in uh, 79. It came out as a movie in 1980. And I don't know. Where were you? I don't know. Yeah, I don't that. No, this was even before that. This would probably be the second big artist gathering to uh, something like this in, uh, after Bangladesh, I would think. I want to teach the world to say. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> but uh, No Nukes was a, a bunch of artists that got together. It was uh, uh, Jackson Brown, Bonnie Rayet, uh, the Doobie Brothers, uh, Bruce, of course. And all these people got together and uh, put on uh, a few shows all in one night. Not one night, but I mean, over a period of a few nights in Madison Square Garden. And that was in September 79, and by July 80 came the movie, and I still had not seen him live yet. But I do remember going to see this movie, so this was my first real introduction to seeing what this guy was like on stage. And uh, I still didn't compare to the, the live or the real thing, but um, it just started stoking the fires. And, of course, the, uh, the October 1980, the whole album comes out, and it's just full of stuff. So I thought I would spotlight that album today. I've got... Not really a lot from the album. I decided to go with all the rare stuff that didn't come out, <laughs> like demos. And I got some demos. I got some stuff that never made it to the album. Uh, an instrumental track of one of his biggest, uh, the big hit off the album, of course, was Hungry Heart. Uh, so uh, I thought I'd play just a bunch of eyes. And then I got two songs from that, if I get time here, two songs from that live uh, show that I went and saw him at the very first time here in Rosemont. Uh, and uh, we'll see if I can squeeze those on it. So, anyway, this is The River from No Nukes, uh, 19, well, 1979, technically, then released in 1980. This is a, this is a song. This is a, 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 this is a,
Yeah. <laughs> 
introduction to it, as a matter of fact, uh, if you notice in the beginning, says this is a new song. So um, a year before it would even uh, be out on the street in uh, vinyl form. So uh, again, that's from No Nukes. If you ever had not seen the movie, uh, search it out. It's pretty good. Uh, so like I said, I wanted to spotlight the anniversary of uh, the release of The River in 19, 1980 in October, uh, 17th to be exact. And uh, I figured instead of just playing the songs, if you've ever listened to this show, you know I don't play just the stuff that I have. But I mean, I like to do some other odds and ends and some weird stuff here and there. Uh, so what I figured I'd do is just take some uh, uh, cuts that never really made, uh, that did not make the album, or they were um, uh, demos or whatever cases. So a lot of them came out in uh, various forms later, specifically on tracks, uh, which is where this next one came out on. And uh, this is Take Them As They Come. <laughs>
couple of songs, like I said, that uh, from the album look very uh, different than what you would hear off the record. And it was recorded April 1980 and uh, left off, didn't uh, surface again until Tracks came out in uh, 1998. Uh, next one up is a song I believe I, I never heard of. I'm going to play that one and uh, go to break. And um, this one's called Break My Heart Tonight. Uh, one, two, three, four. <laughs>
was going to want, I keep wanting to say little white lies, but that's white lies that uh, was a, a precursor to uh, be true. Uh, okay, and next one up again. I did not hear this one. This is, I'm finding all these interesting things out there. So I'm um, doing a little bit of research. There's so much out there. You just, you know, you can just find it. Uh, again, YouTube is a valuable source for if you want to just go find rare brews. Uh, but this is called Chain Lightning. Now, what I'm going to do is play the demo. Okay, the demo first, which was an acoustic, uh, very short minute and a half. And then the electric version, I think what they did was they held it over, uh, possibly uh, what I was finding is possibly even after the river was done. But this was in originally intended for the river. So this is called Chain Lightning, and then I'll just go right into the electric one.
see the light of day or not. You never know. Like I said, uh, who would ever thought <clears throat> that most of these would end up on tracks all those years later. But, um, and like I said, I, I, I keep hoping that someday we'll see tracks volume two where there's just so much out there. Or, or the other, you know, rumor for a while was the uh, remastered river uh, with extras. But now, of course, uh, if you've been following things, the news that the first, uh, I think it's the first five or six albums are coming out here uh, in November, all remastered. So that's, that's good news. That's going to be great news for uh uh, people that have been putting up with the first two records <laughs> in the condition that they're in. Um, uh, Greetings from Asbury and uh, you know, Wild Innocent are just so, they sound so muddy. And uh, I've been saying that for years. And it just, uh, it's going to be great to see what uh, they do to them. So uh, they're going to release those all the way up through Born in the USA. So uh, that ought to be some uh, interesting listening. So. Uh, look out for those. And, of course, uh, the other news was Outlaw Pete coming to a bookstore near you. So I've taken the Springsteen song off of Working on a Dream and I've turned it into a children's book. So uh, can't wait to see that, too. Uh, like I said, we're spotlighting the songs off the river. Now, this is uh, this song is Point Blank, which, of course, ended up on the, on the uh, album. But this is a completely different version. And uh, I think I actually like it. It's pretty, pretty not so solid. Uh, I, I picked up a bunch of old magazines not a little more last week, and uh, circus magazines of any used from the 70s and 80s, those circus magazine. And boy, did they slam this album I mean, bad. The guy was just, just all over it, kind of talking about uh, how. You know, Bruce can't make up his mind whether he wants to be sad or angry or happy. Or <laughs> that's the way he is. No, but, uh, you know, I don't know where that writer is today. But, uh, uh, you know, like you said, it's, he, he really tore this record apart. And, and, and a lot of people think it's, it's pretty much his best. But, you know, uh, always, up for, uh, always up for conversation, right? Anyway, this is the, this is, uh, the, the alternate version of Point Blank. One, two, three.
the same. And it was uh, the alternate version of Point Blank. Uh, of course, we all know the, the more slow, um, angst-ridden Point Blank that's on the album, <laughs> if you want to call it that. Uh, okay, I'm going to do one more quick small one, and then i got two live cuts to wrap up the show and figure out if i got enough time. This is the instrumental. I thought this was just kind of neat. You don't hear this too often. This is them working out Hungry Heart. Um, obviously, a, a lot of songs on, uh, a lot of artists pr- prefer to do this where they do the, um, the instrumental take. They do the song first, and then the artists do the music, and then they have the lyrics after. Uh, so this is the instrumental break for, for Hungry Heart. And then uh, when I get back to uh, two special cuts from the first show I ever saw. Oh, one, two. So I figure when I, you know, I played these uh, demos, et cetera, et cetera, and, and some of the, you know, back, some of the info on the album, I thought I would play a couple of live cuts, you know, now that the record's out, he goes on tour to back it up. First time I ever saw him, uh, and as a matter of fact, that uh, Hungry Heart, uh, the show that I went to November 20, 1980, at the Chicago Rosemont Horizon, uh, was the first time that the audience uh, just started singing that opening uh, uh, lyrics, and of course now it's been you know it's been like that ever since. But uh, my show, the first show was uh, and I did play that before I know on this uh, on this show anyway. But uh, I'm gonna play two more two more live cuts from that show. This was November 20, like I said. I'm gonna do Cadillac Ranch, and then we're gonna wrap it up with Ramrod. Uh, Probably go over a little bit past my 6 o'clock hour, but that's okay. And uh, we'll see you all in another week or so. This has been Getting Loose with Bruce with your host, Ray Zirkel. And uh, like I said, heard here every Monday at 5 o'clock. And uh, uh, we'll see what we spotlight there next week. But uh, like I said, a couple of live cuts from that show uh, promoting the river in uh, November 1980. We'll talk to you all next week.